Hey, mihi nui, o te tauhau pākehā, e hōmā. Warm greetings to this European New Year that has just begun, and welcome back to these reflections we have from the Gospel. I hope you've had a worthwhile summer break. If you're down under with me, we've had some great weather and some good holiday times here, but maybe you're in the north, struggling with winter, racked with COVID, and I really hope that you're able to sufficiently negotiate that well and um, thrive in your situation. It certainly is trying times for many in our world at the moment. As always, scripture when used appropriately has something to say to us that will increase our love, extend our compassion and make those struggles of life bearable because of that extended compassion and love. For the last 10 days, the lectionary has had us reading Mark's story about Jesus. Jesus has been baptised by John, He's called some social misfits to follow him. He's visited a number of religious meeting places, broken a few taboos, and has healed few people, and also come now to the notice of the religious elite, the religious establishment from Jerusalem, who've travelled all the way up to Galilee to check him out today. Again today we find him back in the synagogue context of worship. And the text is Mark chapter 3 verses 1 to 6. A few hours ago I just returned from a, a road trip, a motorcycle journey with my daughter far away to visit some friends. It turned into quite an adventure. Along the way we were blown across the road by the wind. The rain came and made my tyres spin on some of the slippery roads. Water got into my car. Anna somehow managed to break the zip on her jacket, which meant we needed to put tape all around it so she could continue to wear it. And then 100 k's from home, my clutch cable broke. Despite these factors all impacting on our journey, including causing some creative riding to negotiate various traffic lights and intersections, we made it home in one piece, alive and well. Although, if we leave some of these issues unattended, they will seriously affect the usefulness of my bike and its safety, of course. Like the man in our story today with the withered arm, I can't <clears throat> participate fully with things the way they are. So Jesus has been watched on by these Pharisees who have specifically arrived today to check him out. He asks this man with the withered hand to stand up. A debate ensues. Is it right to do good or evil on a holy day? Interesting, the elite remain silent and have nothing to say. So Jesus continues and asks the disabled man to stretch out his hand. He is made well and immediately the Pharisees leave and seek out their unlikely friends, the Herodians, the political party, so they can plot the destruction and the downfall of Jesus. The power and the tension are real and felt by all today who are present. So what could this text do for us today? How could it be helpful? Who might, me, who might we be in the story? Could we be like Jesus and look for those around us whose lives are withered, <clears throat> maybe by poverty, injustice, colonisation, grief, or other uh, losses from life? We found encouraging people to stand and stretch out their arms in front of powerful people who often benefit from their sickness. Are we able to join these people in solidarity to seek to bring out their intrinsic human dignity and mana? Or maybe we could put ourselves in the shoes of the man that Jesus invited to stand with the withered arm. What unmet needs do we have? What griefs and losses hold us back and wither our lives and prevent us being all that we could be? What parts of our lives might need attention like my clutch? So that we, we can become functional and fully whole. It can be really difficult to own up to our struggles and our shortcomings. Embarrassing to name them publicly, even to ourselves. Yet we all have these things. And like my bike today, they limit our ability to be involved with those around us and live life to the full. Or maybe even we could be like the Pharisees coming in seeking ways to undermine and squash those who work to lift up the poor, work to be creative and support the battlers and bring healing and health to people and freedom from things that bind and limit their lives. 
I really hope we are not that guy. In his book, The Wounded Healer, Henri Nouwen describes how the Messiah would be recognised in an old Jewish story. He would be recognised as a person who had many wounds, who sat with those who were wounded and withered at the town gate. But instead of exposing all his wounds at once, he would unwrap them one at a time and deal with that one wound, and then once he'd repaired that, made that well, he would help his neighbours. His compassion and solidarity by being present lifted them and brought healing. I hope somehow that we're able to see ourselves in that disabled man with the withered arm being called to full health by Jesus, God made flesh, God who is not afraid of our wounds or struggles. And then in time as we grow in health, may we also be like Jesus, able to share that healing with those around us. But do be aware, there are many in our world today who profit from the withered lives that many people leave, live and they do not want us to be well. Despite their meddling in our lives, may we draw strength and hope from this man as he encounters Jesus and is made well today. We too can be healed and we too can bring healing to those around us. Kia kaha e o huma, aranga māre e o te atua kia koutou.